Hey there everyone, I am Maverick from Arizona Science Center and today we are going to be bringing you another 9.30 a.m. early learning live activity and story for you all. Now today we're going to be talking all about space and we're even going to be making our own rockets. And to get started, we're going to read this book here called There's No Place Like Space. Base. Now, in this book, we're going to learn all about our solar system, and we're going to learn about rockets, and then we're going to do an awesome rocket activity after. So let's go ahead and get started. By the way, this book, if you couldn't tell by this, is by Dr. Seuss, and it is specifically illustrated by Aristides Ruiz and made by Tish Rabe. Let me go ahead and get started here. Now, I'm the cat in the hat, and we're off to have fun. We'll visit the planets, the stars, and the sun. There's no place like space. I will prove it to you. Your mother will not mind if I, at all if I do. They're in their awesome rocket, and they're going to go off to space. Jump in. Here we go. We will fly up so high. We can dance on the moon and play games in the sky. We will swing past the stars, and in case you have missed them, you'll soon see... What do we think we're going to see? The planets in our solar system. There are eight of these planets that circle the sun. And soon you'll be able to name every one. You'll be able to name all of the planets when we're done. Ooh, Mercury's close to the sun's burning light. It's hot in the daytime, but freezing at night. That's Mercury. That planet's the closest one to the sun. On Venus, the weather is always the same. Hot, dry, and windy with no chance of rain. <sighs> Can you guess the next planet? Well, here is a clue. It is my home and home to things one and things two. You've been living on it each day since your birth. It is third from the sun. It is our planet. Hmm. What planet is it? What's the name of our planet? Does anybody know? I'm going to give you the big reveal. It is our planet Earth. It spins all the time round and round like a top. It turns once every day and it never will stop. This question had thing one and thing two in a tizzy. If Earth's always spinning, why don't we feel dizzy? We don't feel the earth as it spins on its way because we're spinning right with it right now every day. Did you guys know that? We're all spinning right now with the earth and you don't even know it. Now the next planet up, next here is Mars. It's the color of rust. We sneeze here because it is covered with dust. Travel to Jupiter and you will find it is bigger than all other planets combined. See that? We've got Mars over here and it's covered in dust so you would sneeze. And then Jupiter's bigger than every other planet put together. It's huge. Saturn has rings. It's so light. Who would think? It could float in an ocean and not even sink. Wow. You guys see this one? This is Saturn. It's got all these rings. But it's so big, but it's so light that it would actually float in the water. A planet can have satellites that surround it. Uranus has a lot of these objects around it. There are colors in space. I will show some to you. Neptune, planet eight, is a beautiful blue. Look at Uranus with all those satellites floating around it. And then look at the pretty Neptune right here. It's all blue. That's awesome. And thing one and thing two are having a great time on the planets. We have seen all the planets. Now here is a trick to remember their names and say them real quick. Say Mallory, Valerie, Emily, Mickles. Just saved up 999 nickels. The first letter of each of these words is the same as the first letter in each of the planets you name. Ooh. So Mallory means Mercury. <gasps> Valerie means Venus. Emily means Earth. 
Let's see. Mickles is Mars. J is, or uh, Just is Jupiter. Saved is Saturn. Up is Uranus. And 999 nickels is Neptune. Wow. Now here is a game you can play in the skies. Connect all the stars you can see with your eyes. It's star dot to dot. Use your imaginations. And you'll see big pictures we call constellations. A dog, the great bear, and Leo the lion. Taurus the bull and a hunter, Orion. Look at all these constellations in the sky. Have any of you ever looked out at the stars and looked at constellations? One of my favorites is the Big Dipper. It looks like a big spoon. A star in the sky may look small like a dot, but it's really a big glowing ball and it's hot. And there's one star by far that's our favorite one. We can't live without it. The star called, hmm, does anybody know what this star is called? Let's see. Everybody's all happy about their stars, but there's one star that everybody's here to see. Let's see if you know what it is. It's a star called the sun. Did you guys know that the sun was a star? It's just a big hot star. From the earth, it looks big. There's one reason why. It's the closest to Earth of the stars in the sky. But be careful and never look right at the sun. Your eyes would get hurt and that would not be fun. How big is the sun? We just heard right this minute. A million of our Earths could all fit right in it. Wow. So the sun could fit one million Earths inside of it and it's super close to Earth. Whoa. Oh, look at the time, we must go very soon. But first, we must take a quick look at the moon. The moon does not shine in the sky in the night, but like a big mirror, reflects the sun's light. Oh, so did you know that? So the moon, when it's glowing at night, it doesn't actually glow, it's just reflecting the light off of the sun. That's why it looks so bright in the sky. Whoa. Astronauts flew to the moon to explore a place no one had ever been to before. They walked on the moon and then drove all over in a special moon car called a lunar rover. An astronomer studies what's up in the sky. Thing two wants to be one. In fact, so do I. Look at them on the moon, driving around in their lunar rover on the surface of the moon. How cool would that be to be able to drive a car on the moon? Wow. The universe is a mysterious place. We are only just learning what happens in space. So I brought you a present to look in the sky. Just put this telescope up to your eye. Oh dear, I must go fly back up to the stars and take things one and two out to dinner on Mars. But there's lots to discover and it might be you who looks up in the sky. Now look at them looking at their telescopes and but Let's see, it might be you who looks up in the sky and finds something new. You know, if you guys become astronomers, if you wanna study space, you could be possibly someone who discovers a planet, a new star, a new constellation, anything like that. You could actually learn and, and uh, discover something brand new in space. And you can get started by doing all kinds of cool activities to learn about space. Now, I've got a really cool activity I'm gonna do here for you. Now, you saw the cat in the hat when he went out into space. A lot of people have been out to space, but what do they fly in? Does anybody know? Hmm. I think they fly in these really cool things called rockets, and we're gonna make our very own rocket right here at home using really simple materials. We're gonna use a balloon, we're gonna use a straw and we're gonna use some tape. And I'll show you a couple different types of rockets. Now this first one, I already made this one, and I'm gonna show you. So you put the tape over the end here and you tape it onto the straw and then you blow it up. 
and then it flies away like a rocket. Now, what's really cool about that is with a rocket, you have a few very important parts, right? You need the body of the rocket, which is what this is, and then you need fuel, right? Without fuel, the rocket's just gonna fall over. It's not actually gonna fly. So we use the air as our fuel with our rocket. So what we do is you take it and you put the balloon right over there, right over the top of the straw, and then you're gonna take some tape and it doesn't matter what type of tape, you wanna have tape that's gonna be able to really kind of seal off the opening of the balloon so no air escapes. That other balloon I made might have had a little air that was escaping. And then sometimes if you have bigger straws, it can actually give you a little more fuel potentially. But what you do is you take that tape and you put it right over the opening of the balloon and wrap it around the straw. Now it's important when you do this to make sure that you have a balloon that's like a little bit bigger because if you have a small one, sometimes when you're pumping the air in, it might accidentally pop. So you wanna make sure it's a balloon that has enough, that will be able to withstand enough air so it doesn't pop. Water balloons actually work really well with this because water balloons are very, very strong. So you kinda put that over the edge there and make sure that it's fully sealed up. And what's really cool is you can do all kinds of cool different designs with it. So when you test it out, Sometimes they might fly better, sometimes they might fly worse, and that's okay because scientists at NASA, when they're creating rockets, it never works the first time they do it. They always have to take it through what are called iterations. They have to take it through trials over and over again, and they keep trying it until it works right. So if it doesn't work the first time, that's totally fine. Just keep trying, and you'll make a rocket that works. We'll see if mine works. and then it flies away, but it didn't fly up, which is okay, so we can add different things potentially to make it fly where we want it to. But that's a really, really easy little rocket you can make. And another really cool thing you can do, I'm gonna grab one more balloon, I'll be right back. Another really cool thing you can do is make a whole rocket track. And I'm gonna show you, I kind of made a really small one, but you can make a really, really cool one at home. And the way this works, I'm gonna take you with me, we're going on a journey. Now, the way this works is, as you see here, I'm gonna go ahead and flip this so you can see it. So if you see this little thing here, I've got a straw and a string. So what you'll do is you'll put the string all the way through your straw and you'll tape it to two different spots. So you'll tape the end of the string to one end right there and then I've got the other end taped up right here. And then you'll take your balloon and you'll put some tape on your straw and you'll take your balloon and you'll pump it up. And then you'll put that on your tape. And when you let it go, hopefully it flies the balloon, your rocket right on up where you want it to go. And you can make some really, really cool ones that fly all across the living room or all across the house or wherever you want it to go. But that was my awesome rocket activity here for you. I hope you had a lot of fun. If you wanna see more awesome science videos every day at 9.30 and one o'clock, go ahead and follow us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and go see everything that we have to offer at azscience.org. Thank you guys so much and have a fantastic day.